Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa Ati Allah Ati Rasulun Al Amri Minkum Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa Salatu Wa Salam Ashraf Al Mursaleen Sayyidina Wa Mawlana Muhammad Al Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Madadakum Wa Nazarakum Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem Ya Habib Al Alameen Madad Ya Sayyidi Ya Sultan Al Awliya Al Shirafi Al Fayz Al Daghistani Sultan Al Shaykh Muhammad Al Azim Al Adil Haqqani Mawlana Al Shaykh Shaykh Kabani Shaykh Adnan Kabani Shaykh Muhammad Al Adil Al Khaliq Al Khushtawani Sahib Zaman Sayyid Muhammad al-Mahdi a.s. Ruhullah Sayyidina a.s.a. Sayyidullah Sayyidina a.s. Thumma Sabbaqa Siddiqi Sayyidina Umma Sayyidina Uthman Imam al-Hasan a.s. Imam al-Husayn a.s. Sayyidat al-Fatima Tazali sallallahu a.s. Wa Sayyidu wa Saddatin Siddiqina al-Fatiha Ya Shafad Ya Rasul Kareem Habib al-Azim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen uh, always a reminder for myself and Abdul Qul Ajeez of Ta'if wa Miskeen wa Zalim and for the, but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah in this blessed month of Zul Fidah and the reality of the Divine the Mirror in which Allah wanting to be known is known through the mirror of all realities, the mirror of all truth is reflecting towards the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And Allah can never be found and Allah can never be approached and Allah will only be known through the mirror. And that's why I'm a hidden treasure wanting to be known and the state of wanting but never really to be known is that not allowing creation to enter into that reality to claim that they know Allah But what they will be granted will be the signs of Allah to know about and towards the understanding of Allah And that is the immensity of the reality of the Divine, the Presence wanting to be known. The whole state of wanting to be known then is, a, is the answer for the seeker that Allah wants to be known. What is it that we're doing to get to know Allah Those whom think they're approaching directly then that's a, a big difficulty and impossibility that they approach thinking they're going to get to know Allah directly by Allah and that that reality can never be achieved to the perfection which Allah wants. When Allah is stating that, I want to be known then the whole purpose of the Muhammadan creation is to make Allah to be known by these signs and, and realities. That is the, the greatness of the Muhammadan reflection and Muhammadan reality that Allah is dressing the names and attributes and all of these realities and perfections upon the Muhammadan light And that beatific light is what draws our souls to that reality. So as Prophet is the reflection of Allah that when you approach the reality and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad who's reflecting to you is Allah That's why Allah praises Allah by Allah's words. When Allah is, is describing khuluq al that Allah is looking to the mirror and saying, you are of a magnificent character. When we understand the immensity of the reality of the servant Abd Allah, when Allah granted the name, He said, the greatest joy for me when Allah called me Abd Allah. That has an immense reality towards the greatest name of Allah when Allah allows something to be attached to His name, that's a, a state of that mirror, Abd Allah, that that state of Abd 
that is, is attaching to the name of Allah for Allah to show its, its immensity that that abd is created as a perfect mirror, as a perfectly cleansed reality. So perfectly clean that nothing comes close to its purity and that's why it's a haqq. That ayna is hayyu and qayyum. That ayna one other way of saying is the soul but it's so pure, it's from Allah's immense oceans of purity. As a result Allah whenever He looks into that mirror He's pleased with His own reflection that reflecting back. And that's why then those ayatul kareem when Allah said, Qul Azeem, you have a magnificent azeem from azimat of your characters, immense, immense is your character. Means that this is Allah's praising upon Allah's reality because the mirror is something non existent, it's not as an identity. The abd is the servant of that reality. So then the mirror is merely just reflecting Allah back. So that in its purest state, the mirror loses its identity. And that's why the turuqs are teaching us lose your identity because as long as you have an identity. So you stand in the presence of the shaykh, you're not reflecting the shaykh, you're reflecting yourself. And this path is about losing the identity so that it's just a, a mirror in which is polished and polished and polished and all that people can see is the reflection that coming through you, not you. That's the, that's the danger of dunya is when the mirror is you, you look to a mirror and you don't see a mirror but you see the identity of that person and that's where it becomes something that is of a lesser degree and lesser understanding. So what's the threshold of what Sayyidina Muhammad has sent for us was the perfect servanthood that the, the ayna the heinous, the, the identity of Prophet's individuality is like a transparent invisible mirror. And all that we love about the reality of Prophet is the reflection of Allah and that's why they describe his walking Qur'an. For us to understand the holy sahabi where we're describing what we know from Allah We don't know anything from Allah but what was reflected through the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad we know Allah Because when we looked at Prophet at that time in the middle of the desert, what was our understanding of rahmah and mercy? You know the Bedouin desert is a very difficult life and very harsh characteristics. So the concept of rahmah and mercy and, and these names and attributes of Allah was not well known to the people. But they understood that when Prophet if, if we want to know rahmah we looked at Prophet his character, how he judged people, how he, he brought the decrees and the laws of Allah with such an immense love and passion and compassion. By knowing Prophet we understood and we knew Allah If this is rahmah that we see through Prophet then we understood the rahmah of Allah because that was the reality of the ayna. The purpose of the mirror was to reflect his Lord. So the Prophets were the mirrors of Allah until the perfected prophecy. That's why we described that the holy hadith is a description of the mirror that when they did their fad and then they came towards their voluntary worshipness, I became the eyes in which they see and they're seeing, I became the hearing in which they hear, I became the breath in which they breathe. That's a description of the mirror. When Allah is giving a hadith al-Qudsi is describing this mirror, it, they are so polished that they reflect my reality. When I look to them I reflect out, so when you 
come to the presence of the Prophets is as if you have been in the presence of Allah and Prophet described to his companions, if you've seen me you have seen Allah because Allah is seeing through my eyes, is seeing through, my, is hearing through my ears, is, is speaking through my breath. That holy hadith is the description of the reality of the mirror and the understanding of the mirroring. So when we want to reach to Allah that's the adab is then face the mirror. That's the highest level of respect and, and understanding for how can you find Allah you're giving Allah a location, a place, a, a space. So the highest level of tawheed and understanding was that we are all searching for the reality of Allah He spires within our heart, then look to my mirror, look to that one whom I created to be known and through that perfect reflection all creation is reflecting out. We said the, the truth which is Hayyul Qayyum, it's ever living. And it's self-sustained by Allah So in Arabic when we say haq it stands for hai, for the eternal oceans of reality and qayyum that the truth is only sustained by the Divinely Presence and there is no human, no jinn, no creation that can sustain and power the truth. The truth is something from the Divinely Presence so that haq is then that mirror in which Allah reflects all of creation is reflecting through that mirror of Sayyidina Muhammad When we understand that reality and really contemplate about that reality, then we understand the depth of what Allah has given to us is a tariqah. So imagine the one who has no tariqah and no understanding, they face just an emptiness. And no matter what they practice, what they do, what they're trying to achieve, it's nothing in comparison to the one whom their wujud is pointing towards the sense of Sayyidina Muhammad It's something that, that can't be understood. So you imagine two people, one whom doesn't believe and understand and Allah didn't grant them this understanding. It's like they're facing just a, a closet with their practices and with whatever benefit their practices have and whatever goodness they were able to achieve with their own hands and feet and ibadah, this is what they'll be dressed with versus the one whom Allah inspired on the path in which Allah wants to be known and inspired you to come onto this path to get to know me. Then they teach you that your entire wujud, your entire presence is always facing Sayyidina Muhammad Make your zikr, make your salawats, perfect your character, take away all these badnesses, take away anger, take away all these things and then scrub. And every time the scrubbing comes this reflection of Prophet is dressing the soul. Imagine with what dresses it's dressing. And when Prophet is teaching you that, make one praising upon me, Allah will send my soul to make ten praisings upon you. That mirror now is, is praising ten times in its oceans of eternity that there is no beginning and there is no end. What praisings, what lights, what blessings are dressing upon the soul? That's why all these naat and especially the Urdu ones, they describe. I, I don't know how I achieved this. Outside people can see because outside people come across me and they say, oh you have so much light, you have so many blessings, there's something about you we don't understand. But the servant themselves they know they didn't do anything. What they did was to face that reality that the shaykhs taught them, they did the zikrs that the shaykhs taught them and as a result that sultan and that beautific light of Sayyidina Muhammad is reflecting upon their soul. And all of creation is mesmerized by the lights that are just reflecting upon your soul, that you become an ambassador of that light and that reality. So then imagine when awliya understood that. They rush to purify themselves, to, to sanctify themselves, to busy themselves, to get the attention of that mirror. Our life is for that mirror to gaze at us. 
And the only time that Prophet gazes at us is by good character, good deeds and good actions. And that's why they do what they do. They figure out we have to have a majlis, we have a majlis, we have to do the food, we have to give food. We have to have good character, we do good character. We have to have our zikr, our salawats, we have to put out the knowledges, we have to do all of these things that they're inspired to do and to ask people to join their caravan. This is a caravan that is busy propagating and doing. It's not a caravan that they say, come join us because our van is parked in the parking lot. We neither do nothing, we propagate nothing, we say nothing, we don't even spread a, a paper on the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So that's like as somebody saying, come join me, I'm parking my car in, in the parking lot and you can sit with me in the parking lot. That's not the caravan of realities. The caravan of realities is the shaykh, you can see the mission that they have is to propagate this love to get the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad And they tell people, come on board with us, come on with us and participate and everything that we do you'll be participating in that and all of that is based on so that Sayyidina Muhammad will be looking at them, gazing at them, praying for them them granting his rida. He says, I see the, the amal of my nation, if it's good I thank Allah Every hadith has these realities and if they look at them and it's bad I ask Allah's forgiveness. So it means that they're in a state in which they're continuously asking Prophet to be happy with all their amals that they're doing and that Prophet is interceding by thanking Allah. Imagine that when Prophet is saying, Alhamdulillah Ya Rabbi that their amal was good, that look what they did, look what they're doing, look how their, their actions are. And then Prophet is saying, Alhamdulillah to Allah That's the, this is the whole miracle of the turuqs and why the shaykhs, the, the, the barakah that flows through them is so immense because of these realities that they've been taught, they understood how to achieve these realities, these blessings, these nazar and all of the fires that coming from this Divinely Presence and Divinely Oceans inshaAllah. We pray that Allah give us more and more himma and more and more ability to, to do good, to do and spread the word, spread the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that to always be under the nazar and the gaze and the rida and satisfaction of the Divinely Presence and the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and only Allah fi samahi wa fi ardi inshaAllah bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.